Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Hi, welcome back to Lecture 2 of Chapter 3. In this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, behavior near invariant sets and some notions of stability that are relevant to invariant sets. So we ended up last time by talking about the distances between two points in Rn, and that's pretty familiar, I hope. But now, since we're going to be talking about invariant sets, we need to introduce a new idea about the distance between a point and a set. So let's call the set M. And, and let's suppose M is a set in Rn. Doesn't have to be an invariant set yet, but just any set in Rn. And let's consider any point P in Rn. And what we want to do is to, do, is to um, define a distance between the point P and the invariant set. And you can kind of guess what that's going to be. We measure the usual distance between P and all possible points in M, and we take the smallest such distance. And that's what this formula says. And you can check for yourself that if P happened to be in M, the distance would be zero. Okay, and we give it a little different name, D-I-S-T, and, and we'll use that throughout the course. Okay, so we're going to talk about behavior near invariant sets for autonomous ODEs. And last time when I talked about behavior near specific solutions, I did it in general for autonomous and non-autonomous. But it's a, there are some technicalities involved. We're talking about invariant sets for non-autonomous ODEs. And I'll leave that to you as a mystery for now. But so I want to develop the idea for autonomous ODEs. So we have a flow for autonomous systems. And suppose let's let M be a invariant set, and I'm going to require it to be closed. I didn't require that in my general notion of an invariant set, but I'm going to now, and that just means that it contains all its boundary points. Now, you can see where that might be important later on. In many applications, you want it also to be bounded, but I'm not going to enforce that at this stage. Okay, so we want to define the notion of Lyapunov stability of invariant sets. So let U be any neighborhood of M. Okay. Then Lyapunov stability of the invariant set M is still the same idea. Start close, you stay close. In this, in this situation, it's a bit different. For any neighborhood U of M, any neighborhood, if we take any point in that neighborhood and we look at the forward time trajectory through it, we always stay in that neighborhood forever after. Now, asymptotic stability is going to be what you might guess. It's Lyapunov stable, but you start in it the neighborhood. You stay there, but you actually get closer and closer and closer to the invariant set, and that's where we need this distance measure. So in dynamical systems theory, we have a little bit of a different terminology. We often talk about a, an attracting set, and this is a definition. If M is asymptotically stable, it is said to be an attracting set. That makes perfect sense attracting get closer and closer. Now we have the notion of basin of attraction. These last two definitions are more from dynamical systems theory and not so much in the typical ODE book, but it's the same thing. And so I, I bring them together here. The basin of attraction is a simple idea. So we have an attracting set. The basin of attraction is the set of all points that are that approach the attracting set, that are attracted to the set, basin of attraction. 
Okay, a set of all points that approach it as t goes to infinity. Stability is an infinite time concept. Keep that in mind. All right, that's a lot of definitions in the last lecture and in this lecture. So we need a really thorough example that is going to tie everything together. And uh, we're going to, I'll give you that in the next lecture. So that's it for now. See you next lecture.